and as I say, this is the Tuesday Talk, which is a live general WoW discussion, uh, where I'll just uh, talk about whatever, and people can throw whatever they want to talk about in as well, and we sort of go from there, really. Um, oh, hi, Karatha, at least. So, but yeah, if someone can at least confirm that the sound is working as usual, it sort of always has, great. Hi, everyone. Um, but I'm not getting very much information through here at the moment, which is really weird. Not sure what that's about. But um, yeah, there's a couple of uh, interesting things that people have sort of put on some comments that could potentially form uh, the basis of some discussion, particularly in lieu of like um, some videos that I should be putting out this week at the moment. There is one uploading at the moment. You'll probably notice there's not been many gone live recently even though I've sort of finished work in theory that means I should be able to do loads which I will be able to after tomorrow um, but I've had to do quite a lot of housework to get my house back in order because I'm not a natural tidy <laughs> so it's all a bit messy so I've been doing quite a lot of housework recently um, but the part three to heroic tumor side well heroic normal it covers normal as well but it just goes through heroic so it's got all the extra abilities from that um, part three, which is the last three bosses, which is Maiden, Avatar, and Kill Jaden. And it took me ages. It took me quite a long time, the last one. Um, I actually could have split it up into two further parts. I should have potentially have done, I suppose, Maiden and Fallen Avatar and then Kill Jaden on its own. Uh, I, it surprised me how long it took for me to do the Kill Jaden bit because, it, you know, it strikes me, even in vain, it strikes me as not being... The, the trickiest of end bosses for an end of instance boss uh, but in reality there are quite a lot of mechanics on it uh, that are all quite crucial it's just that they're fairly straightforward to deal with if you're minded to um, but yeah a few things people are talking about first of all you know the Illuminati confirmed thing so someone what was it someone put a comment on a YouTube video just today um, what was it saying yeah, this is on the video I did on Limit Getting Banned Again, which just keeps rolling on, actually. I keep, But it says, uh, TOS, Tim of Sargeras, and TOS Terms of Service covered in one video. Illuminati confirmed. Well, there are greater coincidences than that. Uh, obviously, Method have now killed Mythic Kill Jaden. Uh, so, congrats to them. Um, so, it did just about... Because people were wondering, is it going to go into a third reset? Uh, scratching our heads, trying to work out the last time that happened for a mythic raid boss or the equivalent of a mythic raid boss but method themselves pointed out something a little unusual now i'm trying to remember exactly what the date was hold on i can't completely forgotten now when they killed it however there was actually some uh, suspicion that they might be because i noticed on discord some people were looking at and thinking oh method are like early hours of the morning and method was still raiding and some people were wondering what's going on there because they don't normally do that and other people were suggesting well, it's probably because they're quite close uh so and yeah sure enough they they did kill it um but the dates they killed it on which i've now forgotten was it was it the sunday i've completely forgotten when they killed it but whatever date it was was the exact same date that they killed Mythic Arkham on two years ago. Like exactly the same day and month, uh, which is quite freaky. And then the other, the big thing with Legion, I think Blizzard did this deliberately. I don't think this is a weird coincidence. I th I'm sure they did it deliberately. Um, it really annoyed me because last this time last summer, obviously Legion wasn't out yet, but we're really gearing up for it. So I'd already you know, been in the Alpha and Beta quite a bit. Uh, it was really gearing up. I was hoping, I sort of knew it probably wouldn't happen, but I was hoping it would be released during the summer, like July, August, because that would have suited me, because this time of year, as I say, I've got the time to dedicate it to it. And when a new expansion comes out, like this expansion, for example, the same sort of with the last one as well, I, I not only have to get a character up, leveled and geared, ready for raiding, um, which can take long enough as it is, around work if it's if it's going to be during work time uh, but I had to do a second one as well for split raids um, so I was thinking if it could go out in summer then I can do what a lot of other people do in raid guilds and basically just you know no life it get them all leveled up in a day and, and then 
uh, be doing the content, all the time gated content in particular, you get a bit of a head. But it didn't happen. They actually released it on the 30th of August, which was which was the day I went back. It was actually the day I went back to work. And then someone pointed something out that made me think, oh, you did that on purpose. And so the 30th of August is what Americans would write as 8.30. So in Europe, we tend to write the day first, then the month. The Americans, the month first. So 8.30. And then someone pointed out, if you look up chapter 8, verse 30, on in the book of Luke, where is it? I've written it. I've got it down. It says this. Uh, and Jesus asked him, saying, What is thy name? And he said, Legion. And I'm thinking, yeah, someone at Blizzard did that on purpose. So there I was thinking, they could have probably brought it out a week earlier. You know, they've deliberately chosen, because it was really weird the way they chose that date, because they told us the dates Legion was going to be launched four months before it did. That has never happened before. They've always ever given us two months' notice. We've always had two months' notice. Because if you think about it, they want to release it. I mean, sometimes there's a tactical reason for releasing it in relation to the release of other studios' games. Uh, but generally speaking, they want to release it when it's ready. They certainly don't want to release it before it's ready, unlike some other studios. Blizzard are pretty good about that. Um, so how can, you know, so that's why the two-month thing makes sense. It's, it basically means, yeah, we can definitely get it done uh, for then. Um, so four months' notice was a bit like, there's, quite, there's probably quite a large margin for error there. Uh, and you actually could have brought it out earlier, you little buggers. Um, so yeah, that was ah. Uh, so yeah, there's there's plenty of coincidences around this. Um, quite curious though that still I'm still right in saying this, aren't I? Unless it's just happened, no one else has killed Kill Jaden. So exorcists haven't done it either, have they? It's um, it's really weird. So sorry, um, Rick now Rick Lown Impel. Uh, seven out of nine heroic need more DPS. Maybe not everyone melee. Yeah, melee are a burden on fallen avatar. There is no doubt about that, unfortunately. Um, and you know we're, we're sort of potentially getting ready for the last three bosses on Mythic. We've still got to kill Mistress Sassine. That is no pushover. Uh, we have done one night of progress on that boss last night, and I strongly suspect that we may have several more before we kill it. We did all right, actually. We got it down to 55% a couple of times, which sounds okay for the first full night. We did have an hour on it in a raid before the weekend, but that was just going in like raw, really, without going through detailed strategies or anything, just a general, you know, uh, assignment. Um... But it's, it's going to get harder and harder because the main mechanic that goes through the... It's a bit like Sisters, really. That's got one of the mythic mechanics or the key mythic mechanic continues throughout the whole fight. But it's... Uh, well, I didn't. No, I sort of knew what how the fight works. Um, but not everyone did. Not everyone reads up the tactics, you see, or, or even the abilities. We had some, you know, one of the key things in Mythic Mistress Sassine uh, are something called buffer fish, which they literally buff you when you pick them up. But you have to assign it to some people. Um, and we were like, you know, we'd done a few pulls and wipes, and then someone asked, what's a fish? Um, so, yeah. Um, but, yeah, sis so Sisters has an ability in Mythic that continues throughout the fight, and that can, you know, that can wipe you at any time. And, in fact... The, we, when we killed it, the reset we killed it, we should have killed it, the previous re reset. Hold on, let me think. Would that have been the first? It must have been the first reset. Yeah, the first Mythic reset, we should have been on five, which is what we're on. No, well, at least four out of nine. Um, because we had a pull right at the end on our very last raid of that reset, where basically we had enough people alive, the boss was going to die. It was very, very close to being dead. And this particular mechanic, which is the Umbral Doofer, uh, when you change phase, um, got a bit out of hand and 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 just wiped us. Mistress Sassin has another one like that, um, and and it becomes increasingly more difficult to deal with it with the phase two mechanics. And we're you know we've I wouldn't say we've even got the phase one completely under our belts. 
we could easily go in next time we do it which will hopefully be thursday we could easily go in and take a couple of steps backwards because we've got people going off on holiday now as well which is a big problem so i need and i'm trying to recruit like i'm trying to recruit specific things i'm trying to recruit rogues but you look on wow progress at rogues like yesterday i spent ages looking for quite a lot of them several pages and there was only one that was suitable um and obviously rogues are in short supply at the moment quite a lot of the top reps that i know are all re-rolling rogue um but there's the massive shortage and i can't understand why because as a class it's always really powerful for raiding it's always powerful because the damage is always good uh, that's never rubbish as long as you're willing and able to play multiple specs you know as long as you're willing to go with whichever spec is best for particular because for particular tiers usually one spec comes out on top but then it might be a completely different one the next time um but if you're willing to do that and then the other thing is even if their damage was average you would still take multiple of them just because of their abilities they are you know when blizzard kept saying oh you know uh, a character that's good defensively shouldn't be as good a mobility and vice versa uh, they weren't talking about rogues with that because they're brilliant for both mobility and especially defensives um, they are the most defensible character class in the game. If there is a mechanic that anyone can solo, rogues can always solo it. Um, whereas it used to be the case that that was the province of paladins in the very early days, but now rogues have, have nicked that, so they are the ones who can just deal. Which is why Method on Fallen Avatar, of course, had like five rogues. Um, so that's, in fact, yes, in fact, even the Illuminati confirmed here. It was in fact sub rogues that uh, that we actually had. Oh, it's now gone up. Okay. Um, should I do something with that? I'll do it later. The uh, so that's on the upper end of it. So yeah, it melee a complete disaster on uh, Fallen Avatar. Obviously, on heroic you can cope, but it doesn't make it any easier. Um, for Kill Jaden, it's fine actually. There's no problem with melee on Kill Jaden. There's no disadvantage in being melee. In fact. But Fallen Avatar, there is. Maiden, there is a bit as well. You certainly don't want too much melee. It's not necessarily a huge problem. But there's one particular part when you're collecting the orbs where I suppose it depends how you do it, but certainly the way we do it, uh, which is not the way we will be able to do it on Mythic. Um, but the straightforward way to deal with the orbs means that melee are just not going to do a great deal of damage at that particular point of the fight. So you certainly want a nice healthy m amount of ranged in there. But yeah, so I'm, I'm going to be doing a, a, like a halfway through review of Mythic. I did a review of Tomb of Sargeras just based on the normal in Heroic after the first week. That's just in general what the bosses are like and how it feels. But I'm going to do one just for Mythic. But on the half, obviously we're just halfway through. We're on five out of nine with some progress on the sixth boss, um, which is probably not in time-wise not even halfway through, because it will take us longer to kill the last four bosses, a lot longer than the first five, of course. Um, but um, yeah, I don't know how other people have been getting on, but uh, it gets it, well, it goes up and down a bit actually. So on Mythic, like. The easiest boss is probably Harjitan. Like out of the first three bosses, Goroth is probably the hardest of the first three bosses. Um, because the, the mythic abilities are more impactful than they are for demonic acquisition, and especially Harjitan. Um, then, after that, Sisters. You know. Actually, that was a weird thing. I did LFR this week uh, for the part two one with desolate host and the desolate host boss on lfr doesn't have the desolate host boss and i'm sort of thinking i could sort of understand why because i'm obviously on lfr i mean on lfr we didn't actually wipe uh, i think when you've got a few people like me and that the, you know can carry the dps a bit you sort of survive uh, quite a lot uh, and you get through those bosses um but it was just weird that you have this boss called the Desolate Host and the Desolate Host never actually shows up on it. 
I don't know what actual LFR raiders would think of that. I really don't know. Um, but anyway, hi, people have just sort of joined. Uh, if you want to throw something in anyway, if you want to sort of talk about anything, just throw it into the comments, by the way. Uh, I'm just going to sort of rabbit on. Uh, Mistress LFR tornadoes have gaps. Yes, I noticed that as well. Well, just as well, to be fair, on that one. I mean, you know, I've... Like, I would say our progress on... Because the way it works, yeah, so on, on LFR, you've just straight up got gaps. You just have to avoid them. The reason being, of course, if you're going to try and tell people to kill the ads just before the tornadoes come in, it's not really going to work on LFR, is it? So you can't really be having... Plus, I suppose it's also because I don't think... I didn't notice anyway, the Abyss Stalkers dropping those puddles on LFR. I'm not sure that happens. Correct me if I'm wrong. Because maybe it did, I can't remember. Because obviously what they do is give you a hit penalty, which means that you basically can't hit the boss if you stood in it. And well, LF, a lot of LFR people, like people that are just used to LFR, may not notice that they're not actually hitting the boss at all. They may wonder what's going on with their abilities. Um, they certainly don't have weak aura warnings or anything like that telling them to get out of the puddle. And then normal and heroic tornadoes disappear when they go over those puddles and then hi Chin. and then mythic the tornadoes don't disappear they just slow down through them so that creates a gap a bit like the rings on Elisand. so there's those tornadoes are still there they've just slowed down a little bit so that that's why you wait for the gap there um so you can't stand still you've still got to move a little bit but um I think we did okay because I was listening to some other people talking on Discord about their wipes. Hi, Vestas. Um, but the, you know, some people were saying how all night when they were progressing on it, on their first night at any rate, you know, the tornadoes were never being slowed because people were just destroying the ads too quickly. We at least had a bit more discipline than that. You know, after a bit of fine tuning, we did actually get into a tolerable um, rhythm, really, with the with the tornadoes. I've actually got a video that I can put, show you in a bit. Uh, so, Vestois, what do I figure Blizz are going to do with Jaina going forward? I don't think they've got any idea. I think they have no plans for her. Um, there are so many NPCs in the game now, so many characters, some of which have gone back quite a long way, like Jaina from Warcraft 3. Uh, it was Warcraft 3, wasn't it? Yes, it was. So some have gone so far, you know, the, they, they don't, you know, they'll probably just wait for something to naturally come. I don't think there's anyone at Blizzard actively thinking about what to do with her. I think she's just, you know, at the start of Legion, they, they did what they did at the start of Legion, had to go off in a huff because they wanted to use Dalaran and she was in charge of Dalaran. So they had to have a story to get, get rid of her, which is what's happened. If they wanted to do something, hi Wood, Woodenham. Um, if they wanted to do something with her, they could have just had her sulk a little bit, but otherwise still hang about. So there's nothing planned for her, certainly in Legion. Um, and there's, you know, I just, I think they're just leaving it. Uh, at some point, maybe they'll do something with her again. I hope it's something a bit more sensible than what they've been doing recently, because it all seems a bit weird. Um, best LFR boss was likely Augur. Um, I don't know. See, I haven't done very much LFR because I've generally not wanted, even with Titanforge, I'm not going to go in there thinking. I did do a bit of Elisand LS, uh, LFR because I was so desperate to get the Convergence of Fates that there was a point at which even an LFR baseline one would have done. Um, but I uh, never got it. Uh, but I haven't done very many at all. If you look on the armor, it's like hardly any LFR done. Normally I would do LFR, of course, on Alts, but... I've not really been that bothered about alts either this expansion, even though I've leveled most of them up. And I'm going to, you know, the next on my list will be the Rogue and the Shaman. Um, but really just to level up and probably not do very much with, I don't know. So I haven't really been doing much LFR, so I can't remember on Arc. See, it could well be that on Augur, Star Augur, if I switched to that ad, I probably would have killed it in a reasonable amount of time. Um, You only need a few people doing top tier DPS, and you can actually carry those sort of. If they do the, if you do the fights properly, that is, 
you can sort of carry it a bit. As I say, the LFR I did this week, I ended up doing both wings actually, because I had the mission item, uh, where I had to kill Mistress Sassine for the cash. And I'd, we'd done it on Heroic already, we weren't going to be killing it on Mythic. So I thought I ought to do it on LFR then, before last night's raid, when we are going to be doing progress. Just in case, I mean every cash I've had so far, both the weekly cash and the Tumor Sargeras caches have returned me Chaos Crystals um, ever since Tumor Sargeras launched. I've not had anything useful. So my hopes weren't high, but I thought I'd better do it anyway just in case. Um, and so because I'm used to doing Mistress as the fourth boss in Heroic and the sixth boss in Mythic, I just naturally went to um, into part two of LFR. And I did that, and it's like, it didn't turn, it's like, oh, it's in part one. In you know, So for LFR, it's the first wing. So I had to do both wings. And then I actually did get something useful. I got the Bis Fire Relic uh, at 9.30, so that was handy. Did I get time to revisit Black Temple? Yes, I did. Uh, how it went was uh, very easy. Some people were telling me it was quite easy, actually. And it was. We didn't wipe on anything. Um, there were some comedy moments in it. The best one was with Supremus. We were f killing the trash leading up to Supremus and then someone managed to pull the boss. And I mean, it was, and I know it's, someone said, oh, it's got a big hitbox. It's like, it's not 200 yards hitbox. It was huge. So we pulled Supremus with a load of trash. Um, and then well, halfway through the fight, someone pulled even more trash, but we still like one shot it. We know a lot of people died on it though. I ought to find it, hold on. Um, when did we do it? Sunday. What's the date? Hold on. That would have been the 16th, wouldn't it? I may be able to find it. But uh, what would it be? Would it be this one? That looks like it. Um, let's uh, mute it though. Hold on. Let's have a look. Um... Oh, I mean, oh yeah, I mean, you know, I mean that was what surprised me. I, I was sort of thinking, um, hold on, we've gone too far now. It's really finicky. So here we go. There we go. So Supremus has been pulled there, um, and we've still got a load of trash. We've already got three people dead, and a lot of people don't remember Black Temple. So I was trying to, well, just basically tell them two things. One, if you see a volcano, move away from it. And two, if you get fixated, run away from the boss. Uh, although some people still got caught on the fixate, and I don't know how, because I, I got fixated at one point. I thought, if even audio problems, are there? What on? Just in case it's the usual. Okay, that's fine. Uh, sorry. Because sometimes it is like I'm at the I don't actually have to for this, but it saves messing about. I put my audio through voice meter banana very occasionally. It's only done it once on a stream, it did it last week. Uh, very occasionally it goes a bit weird, like robotic, and I have to close it down and open it up again. Um, but well, I think the reason I had to make it easy because it's only out for a week. Um, you know, my preferred one for this would be to say we have time walking each month and although the time walking dungeons are out for a week maybe the time walking raid could be out for a month and then they could have made it a little bit better because i'm going to be honest this is lfr level difficulty it's you know it's heroic it's flex you're supposed to take your own group which we did as you can see it's not a full guild group a lot of people weren't actually that bothered by it uh, even though I got a nice piece, nice piece of loot actually, it would have actually been something I'd be wearing for my main spec, were it not the fact I got a better one just last week. But it was actually quite nice. Some 915 crit haste braces. Um, so there's more people dying here. Stupid crap. And yet, you know, we still, as I say, still kill the boss. Um, but I think that's why they made it easy just because some people, like you say about downgrading gear, but it's the same when you go into dungeons, is it? See, I don't, some people have time walking gear, don't they? Like, for example, I know that my haste is gonna get wrecked 
with it. Like I am used to 30 plus percent haste, but when I went into Black Temple, it'd be like nearly half that or a bit over half that. So I put on a couple of haste items. There I go. I'm running away from it. I'm not getting caught. I'm a paladin for goodness sake. Uh, and then it was a very, as soon as he finished following me, it was a long old trek. Why am I still running away? Go on, get back. Um, but, yeah, so I put on a couple of haste items. I also put on the mop legendary cloak. I didn't use the wad legendary ring, though, because it was terrible stats, and people were telling me, actually, the proc doesn't, uh, sorry, the ability doesn't do that much good for you anyway. Um, but other than that, it's just my normal main gear. And, you, you know, when people go into time-walking dungeons, although we're all supposed to be downgraded to the same item level, I always do way, way more damage than the people that are in there as pugs. So, you know, it just goes to show you, it's, it's not just about the gear, the amount of damage you can do. And again, that comes back to that rogue issue I was talking about. So when I've been looking at rogues and WoW progress, almost all of them, even ones with some mythic progress, you look at them on WoW Warcraft logs, and you're just thinking this is terrible. The, the damage is awful. Uh, they would even allowing for the fact that their kill times would be different and their raids may not be as efficient as ours. Not that ours are particularly efficient, but more efficient than many. Um, it's still such. Or you know, because sometimes what I do to be fair is I might look at their DPS for the first half a minute. So then that shouldn't take into account uh, fight length or anything like that. It just sees how they are on the burst and stuff like that. And it's so bad, and you're just thinking, you know, it surprises me. Um, and so that's the problem we've got at the moment. I need rogues, and there just aren't any good ones. It's the same problem I've got in Nighthold, actually. It's not just rogues. I could do with a couple of other things. But um, there isn't this gradual, gr like, this gradient of ability. You, ex you know, you'd expect, like, a few people who are really, really good, probably a guild like ours aren't going to nick those. Um... It's not even just that, it's other classes as well. And you get, uh, and then you get, um, you know, you would also, ex you just expect a gradual decline in ability. And we would just grab whichever was the best ones we could get. But what in reality happens is you've got a sort of small number of really good ones, very difficult to, to get them to join your guild. Sometimes you, you get lucky and you can do. And then the um and then what happens is there's just basically this huge gap where because there's a certain point at which even if you're really really desperate if they're not if they can't meet the minimum requirements to kill a mythic boss there is no point in trying to recruit them because you know if they're not actually any better than an empty raid slot then there's no point and of course, if they can't deal with mechanics, they might actively be worse than an empty raid slot. Um, yeah, sub rogues have gone, but rogues are always good. There's always a spec of rogues, at least, that is really, really strong. And that's why it surprises me, because as I say, if you're a player that just wants to get raid spots in good guilds and stuff like that, uh, there are a number of classes that are fairly safe options, and it's all the pure DPS classes, essentially, with warriors as well. But um, rogues are top of the list. Rogues are absolutely the top of the list. Because there is always, as long as you, you're not one of these people who identifies as assassination rogue or combat rogue or something like that, or outlaw, sorry, it is now. Um, as long as you just accept that you are a rogue and you will play and, and keep up to date with all the specs so that you know how to play them and you're geared for it and all the rest of it, then you will always be in demand. And, you know... It can't be the most difficult class to play. I know some are a little bit easier than others to play at a basic standard. But I don't think there's anything mad about rogues that make it more complicated than, than most others. Um, so it's a, it completely baffles me that there aren't more. But there aren't more. There, there's hardly any of them. Uh, that, are, that are the required standard, as I say. And, and I, don't, I don't understand why. This, I mean, this boss, Shade of Akama... Even in TBC, when we did it for the first time, we two-shot it. And we were actually vaguely embarrassed that we didn't one-shot it. It was quite close to a one-shot, but we cocked a few things up. Because we didn't read, you know, in those days in our guild that I was in at the time, we didn't, like, really read up on stuff or anything like that. Or, I don't, was PTR even a thing? 
I suppose it must have been to some extent. We certainly didn't do any. Um, but even then, it was just such an easy fight. You didn't have to know anything, and you could work it out. Uh, well, it depends what you mean by skill cap, though. Do you mean to play, you know, to be top draw, or just to play to a... Because all you need is to play to a basic standard. You just need a certain basic level. And I can't think, you know, because I've only... Assassination has always been fair, well I say always, for the past few expansions has been fairly straightforward, uh, yes. Again, to a basic level, obviously any spec is difficult to play to a top level, to be one of the top players in the world, of course it is. Um, you know, no one, you know, it doesn't matter how easy, when people talk about easy specs or difficult specs, what they really should mean is to play at a decent standard, to be okay. Not brilliant. Okay. That's why I play Beastmaster Hunter for my main alt at the moment. Because I can leave it for a few weeks, pick it back up again, and have forgotten basically what stuff does. But it's quite quick and easy to do a basic job. Um, you know, I can have the wrong talents, not know which talents to take in which situation, uh, and press my buttons, and it'll do okay. I won't embarrass myself. Um, now... Subtlety might not be as easy as that, but you know, I'm I can't believe that someone playing it as a main after and, and, and they're doing mythic bosses as well, so they must be getting the practice. Can't be doing better than the, some of these people are. It can't be that high a skill cap just to do basic job because even if you just do a basic job of it, your utility is what's going to keep you in that raid. Um. Would I recommend Legion? Ugh, it's a difficult one, isn't it? Um, it depends on what they want to play it for. Obviously, Argus coming up is a very is going to be a very law heavy uh, patch. So, if they're very interested in that sort of thing, then it's always a good idea. I'd also say it's always a good idea anyway to get into it ASAP because you only have to play it casually. And to play it casually, there's no great problem. They've made they've made a lot of things a lot easier now in Legion. The legendaries is still the big problem. Um, but again, if you're going to play it casually, then even that's not really a problem. So if they oh sorry, dear. I can't even read that. Sky Danza. Hiya. Um, if they're going to, um, yeah, everything else is fine. So the artifact power you can catch up with extremely quickly. Uh, gear you can catch up with extremely quickly. And it's only legendaries that might bite you on the arse. I mean, I know someone who was a, a really good retribution paladin uh, who used to be on my realm. He's moved to Horde now. And he's gone back to Rogue and he was just saying... Well, he was saying, first of all, that their guild two weeks ago had one rogue, and now they've got four, which is really annoying. Because two weeks ago, our guild had two rogues, and now it's got one. <laughs> and that one's mentally unstable. Um, but he's one of them. <laughs> he's one of the rogues. So he said a few weeks ago, he didn't have a rogue at all, of any kind. Now he has a 930 rogue with Bis Legendaries, and he's on progress for Mythic Avatar. It's like that. Um, yeah, level up a Retribution Paladin by all means. Uh, unless, of course, you want to do Mythic Progress. But if you're only just in the levelling stage, not many people could level up a character at this point and get it Mythic ready. Some people, obviously, people who can put in ridiculous amounts of time and have people in their guild who can help them through, like, Mythic Plus Dungeon and stuff like that, then that would help a lot. Even in Actros. Um... Well, Shadowfiend, that's a good point you make there. I mean, with some people, if they're not getting on with a particular spec, yes, indeed. And the same could be true of any class. You are better off playing um, not the best spec well than the best spec poorly, aren't you? Um, and even Assassination will be decent. It's just... and Because that is something curious. I did notice that myself. You look at some of these rogues that, as I say, weren't even up to minimum standards. And... 
there's a number of them, not all of them, but a number of them, when you looked at their logs, and of course their logs don't tell you everything they do, but it seems strange to me that some of them, all their logs were salty. None of them were, and you would think that, wouldn't you, that you do obviously want to practice sub, you know, sub because it's looking best, but if assassination is easy, just play that. But, um, but with enough practice, you'll be able to pick up anything. To a re as I say, to a reasonable level, don't have to be stunning. Because the mechanics are the key thing anyway. I know Avatar at the moment has a, a tight DPS check, but it won't do by the time most of us get there. In fact, there might even come a point when even a Retribution Paladin could be in on that fight. I wouldn't have thought any time soon, though. Unless you're Chinese. The Chinese Rets seem to be a special breed. Uh, they always seem to do those sort of things. Um, well, it depends. Sometimes from fight to fight, so you have a bit... But it is usually the case, yeah, for a, a tier in general, that one spec is the one to take. But again, I mean, you're talking at the top level. If you're talking lowered... The further down you go in progress, the, the smaller the gap really between spec and player skill so you get to a point where player skill can account for more than the spec or gear anything like that um, I remember this being quite insane this bit in Black Temple I couldn't believe that see we were getting away with this this trash was horrendous in the original version of Black Temple absolutely you had to treat it with such respect and they just came in and cleared the lot. Well, that's another problem. You see, a lot of people will look at, they'll either look at sim charts or they'll look at Warcraft log rankings and they'll go, oh, that spec's doing best. I should play that spec. But, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean it'd be best for you. I mean, that, I mean, that depends on your legends as well, doesn't it, I suppose? You know, if you've got bis legendaries for one spec and not for another, then you might actually be better off playing the suboptimal spec because you'd probably do it better but the legend yeah the legendaries are a massive barrier and there's nothing to be done about that one either it's like at the start of legion i would have said well not right at the start obviously but you know after a few months re-rolling bit tricky having alts bit tricky uh, because of the catch-up required they've completely dealt with the catch-up required now for um Especially for alts, because you can get your artifacts knowledge 40 just by spending a thousand order resources. But even for a new player, uh, if you farm those order resources, you can get them very quickly. Um, so you can get your artifact power up as long as you're willing to put in some time. You can get the gear up fairly quickly, but the legendary is, uh, is an insoluble problem. You've just got to be lucky. You can get two fairly quickly. Of course, because of the bad luck protection. Uh, and you might get more than that if you're lucky. Hi, Ellips. But, um, but that is just something that could easily bite you on the ass. Like, I know some reps that are saying they only need one more legendary. And it's the Bis belt for us. That's the one they don't have. Which is unfortunate. Um, Wrath of the Lich King time walking. Yeah, we, we disc in fact, I think that was in the first Tuesday t uh, talk we were talking about what other time walking raids we should do. Um, see, for me, it's quite tricky because I'd left the game at the end of the second version of Nax because Nax Ramus in Wrath was such, not only a, a, a dreadful travesty of a raid, but a shadow of its former glory. And I was not at all happy with, basically, I killed all the raid bosses within a few days of getting to level cap. It took me longer to kill all the dungeon bosses than all the raid bosses. So just before Ulduar came out, I left. I gave my guild plenty of notice to replace me. But I basically said, I'm not doing with this anymore. And then Ulduar came out, which is apparently really good. Um, now, although technically I came back sort of for ICC, it was only to play casually in a friend's guild, a very scrub guild. Uh, so I didn't really get to see much of it. So unfortunately, I can't really say, because those instances to me are things that I either did at a very low level or have just since soloed. Um, but 
ICC would probably be easier to do for time walking than Alduar. Um, they've both got a vehicle type thing. But just like in this, like see in this boss, there's a technically a vehicle type fight, isn't there? Because if you get the mark of death thing, you can get turned into... You can see we're doing this all wrong as well. Every boss we, was a disaster. I was... I don't know why I wasted my time doing that video last week on some advice for dealing with the boss mechanics because you don't need it. You just, look at this. This would have had you killed in like 20 seconds flat um, in TBC. But um, so yeah, I'd probably say ICC is the easiest to sensibly do. Because Alduar, there's lots of things. It's a bit like, even if you made it easy, there's, there's so many fights where you sort of still know have to because there's mechanical aspects to the fight that you have to deal with um like from the very first boss even and whereas these i mean these sort of bosses if you make the mechanics almost inconsequential you can just bludgeon your way through them as we did as we did um it was amazing to me and then you know because i was talking about this and someone had already done it on their out so they sort of knew it was quite easy and he, and they were saying oh you know it, it gets a little trickier on Illidari Council. Then we got to Illidari Council. Even that was a piece of cake. It was embarrassing how simple it was. Uh, just we stuck, stacked them up and AOE'd them down. Well, they, he did take the Paladin out actually halfway through. But um, yeah. Well, my yeah, my rogue. One of my jobs will be to level up my rogue. Um, I've got a couple of levels in at the moment, like 102, 103, something like that. So I shall be doing that. I haven't decided what. I might as well go for sub. Just see what all the fuss is about. Um, I assume that's a perfectly good leveling spec as well as anything else. I have got all the artifact weapons for it. I've done all the. I, actually, hold on. I've certainly done the sub one. I've done the outlaw one. Have I done the assassination? I'm sure I've done the assassination as well. I'm pretty sure I've got all three. Um, so I can just level up as whichever one I want. And then maybe just try it in LFR or something. And then the Shaman I want to do just simply for the Shaman mount, the Broken Shore mount, because I think the Shaman one looks the best. Because I'm not going to do the Legion Fall campaign with all my characters, Gordon Bennett, um, but I, I will certainly do it with the Shaman. But... Mm. I tried as well to try and get the um, achievement with this Black Temple thing. I had um, I had one legendary blade of Azinoth on my monk. Uh, I can't remember for what reason. Oh, I remember in MOP when I'd level my monk up, or while I was leveling my monk up, I dragged it through Black Temple for some gear, and I don't know why, because it makes no sense. I might as well just carried on leveling. I just thought to myself, oh, I'll drag it through, see if I can get some gear from Black Temple, uh, soloing it through. Um, yeah, a load of people died there. Because even the trash can bite you. So we had more we had more trouble with trash to a certain extent than the, the bosses. Um, so yeah, so I had one war glaive on my monk, so I thought well, I'll take my I'll solo my monk through Black Temple that, this week as well just in case I got lucky and snagged the second and then I'd have got the achievement here for the Warglaives skin for Demon Hunters uh, for killing Illidan with the Warglaives achievement but it was not to be I didn't get it but yeah it's I would quite like more time walking raids they are quite funny but it is yeah it is just it doesn't add anything to it like this I, I I mean I don't know what it was like for people who didn't have such an easy time of it but we just like carved our way through there was there was nothing stopped us really as I say the hairiest moment was uh, supremus with all the trash other than that you know, doing the most ludicrous things.
Uh, the other thing I was going to be talking about this week, actually, I'm putting some thoughts to. I talked about, I was talking again about the new player experience. So I'm going to, someone sort of suggested I do a video on what I would do about that. Because my, my issue with new player experience, I've said this before actually, is first of all, new player looks, a lot of new, you know, new players probably have a rough idea about how an MMO works. And you sort of know you need to get to level cap before the game starts proper. And you're looking at it and thinking 110 levels just before the game even starts. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Time. I think the time walking raids would work for a month and then make them heroic level challenge. This is not heroic level challenge. I don't, I mean, I'm, Blizzard haven't said it is, to be fair, as, as far as I know. Uh, but the fact that you have to get a group together suggests it's supposed to be at least normal level. Um, I, I just saw it as LFR level. You know, if our guild went through LFR to Masagera, say, we wouldn't have had any more difficulty on this Black Temple than we would on that LFR. I mean, there were people who had no idea. There were some people asking what to do on this next boss, for example. Um, and, you know, it, the answer was, it doesn't matter. <laughs> It'll still just die. I mean, this this was a frightening boss. This was a very complex boss at the time. Everyone had to absolutely know what they were doing. And and look at this. No one knows. Well, not no, that's not true. There were a few of us who do remember Black Temple. So there's probably about three or four of us in this raid, if that maximum, that knew what we were doing with this boss. No bugger else did. It made no difference at all. Uh, but yeah, I was, uh, oh, at least now it'd be more than that, wouldn't it? Um, because you've got to think about it at the time. I don't, what was the subscriber count at then? I know it peaked at something like about 12, but that was like wrath, wasn't it? So let's say it was about nine at the time, nine, 10, something like that. Um, then, and we don't know how many subscribers there are now, of course, because Blizzard keep that information secret. Uh, people will sort of say one thing or another, but no one actually knows. So let's suppose it's round about half that, which it could be. Um, that doesn't mean to say that half of all those people, because there'll be people who quit Black Temple and new ones that came on as well. I mean, apart from anything else, most people that I sort of know and raid with started during Wrath. Uh, there's so many Wrath babies. That was the explosion, population explosion. So I can't think there are actually that many people who even remember Black, who were playing at the time of Black Temple and then fewer still who actually progressed all the way through it in good time. But I wish I could find the video, the kill video I did for this boss actually because there was a bit of a cheese strat in it where I... on on the transition phase used my divine intervention um, to protect someone and then had to get res back up can't actually remember why now though but um, but yeah so I was saying about new player experience see to my mind what I was saying on the mailbox thing is I think the leveling experience is an advanced tutorial for the game so what do you need out of that tutorial you need to let people understand how to play the game. So there's game mechanics you need to realize. So you should be encouraging them to do some like dungeons, uh, be able to solo some stuff as well, get used to, but also their class abilities. So, you know, I, you know, character boosts are fine for someone for whom it's an alt and they'll just get used to it. But for a new player, not great. You've suddenly got all these abilities, three pages in your spell book with abilities plus talents. Um, it's quite tricky. Like, for example, I'm I'm going to play a bit of Lord of the Rings Online again this summer. And I, I've been on my champion the last couple of days for a bit just to get used to it again. And there's... Um, I mean, Lord of the Rings Online has been out for like 10 years now. It has not gone through the ability prune that WoW has. Ridiculous number of abilities on my champion. Stupid number. Far more than there should be. Far more than there needs to be. Um, but nonetheless, I'm looking at all these abilities and trying to get my head around it and thinking, I, I, 
I don't know. And I've tried to find guides, and there's no decent guides as far as I can tell. Maybe I'll go on the forums and ask in case there's one hiding away somewhere. But they're all absolutely rubbish. The video guides are rubbish. The written guides are rubbish. Um, so I'm going to have to work it out on my own. It's quite a task. So you imagine a new player of this game suddenly getting all the abilities too much. So you're far better off, you know, leveling. Start at level one, get three abilities. And then maybe every, I don't know, every, what seems reasonable, 15, 20 minutes of gameplay, you get another ability. So how many, does anyone know roughly how many abilities we have? Hold on, I can't. Um, should I count them on my bar here? I mean, let's say you've got about 30. I don't know, I might be, I'm just guessing here. So let's say you start off with about two of them, just to make the maths easier. And then every 15 minutes of gameplay, or projected, because obviously for some people they might go a bit quicker, some a bit slower. Let's say you get another one. So you get, what oh, does that seem to, no. Let's say three an hour, that might be more reasonable. So we'll go back to starting off with three abilities. Um, is it about 28? So, I mean, it varies with talents as well, because some talents are passive, some are, you know. I'm just gonna guess, I'm just guessing. So I wasn't far off with the guess. It might be a bit more, might be a bit fewer. Um, so let's say you start off with three. So that means another 27. And if you learn them at a rate of roughly, um, even one every half hour gameplay or, or predicted gameplay, then that's about 13 and a half hours of gameplay. So let's say 14 hours of gameplay. That's all you need to learn how to play the class to a very basic level. And then you should be ready for end game content, level game content. 14 hours, that's what it should be based around. Uh, it taking, for the average person, 14 hours of leveling to get to level cap. Now, what that creates then is a situation where you say, okay, you're gonna be doing like one quest and finishing with the zone. But I think that's based on the thinking that people should level through vanilla stuff and then level through TBC stuff and blah, 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 blah. Now, I had a couple of ideas for this one. One of them I'm gonna save for the video. But the obvious one to my mind is if they brought out level scaling for all zones, you could easily have a situation where you just let people go wherever they want, make travel easier as well, really let people, you know, uh, go to different, so if they want to at level five, go to the through the dark portal into Outland, fine, do that and facilitate that. Um, and just base it on the, the notion, and massively reduce the number of levels as well, like don't have 110 levels, completely squish it, because there's no reason to not do that. And, and then just sort of suggest base it around about 14 hours of gameplay um that's plenty to be able to get used to those abilities and then the only other thing you need uh of a leveling experience i think is to be indoctrinated into the lore the storyline of the game and again you could easily do that in 14 15 hours as well i mean it makes no sense anyway uh the storyline as you level up it's completely knackered because depending on where you start like Initially, your first experience has been told that, oh, Deathwing's this big bad thing. And you go, oh, right, he's the main baddie in this game, is he? And then you go through a bit. And then, especially if you go to Westfall on Alliance, you've been told, oh, everyone's really poor and hungry now because of the war against the Lich King. We won it, but, you know, we're all knackered now. And then you start leveling up a bit. And then, you know, and it's all between these two main storylines. Um, the Scourge defeated and Deathwing, the ever-growing presence. And then you get to go to Outland, and both of those things disappear completely. Well, that's fine, but at least the Outland story has a coherent storyline. And then you get to level 70, or 68, I suppose, really, and then some idiot's telling you to go to Northrend to do battle with the Scourge and the Lich King. And you're thinking, hang on a minute. When I was level 10, you were telling me we'd beaten the Scourge and the Lich King, and that's why we're all poor and hungry. What's going on? And then you get to, uh, you finish Wrath, and then you, you're into Cataclysm. Well, all of a sudden, Deathwing's back again. It's like, oh yeah, that guy, I remember him. He disappeared out of the view after about level 50-ish. Um, he's back again now, except you never actually come across Deathwing proper because he's a raid thing. And so just leveling through that bit, it just keeps building Deathwing back up. And then you go into Mop and he's gone again. Um, so the storylines are complete nonsense. 
Well, that is another thing. Um, if you have level scaling in and you massively reduce the amount of time it takes to level up because there's no need for that, uh, even for, for a new player, obviously an experienced player would probably do it much more quickly and efficiently, would have heirlooms apart from anything else, then you can also pick and you, you can be more selective about quests as well. Another thing they could do is have a main quest arc like they do in, say, Elder Scrolls Online, Lord of the Rings Online, Star Wars The Old Republic, that sort of thing. And maybe you're told that if you just follow the main story, have a main coherent storyline running right from level 1 to whatever is level cap, say level 50-ish, if you condense it down, and just say, to, if you follow this, that's enough. That's actually my other idea. I'm going to save that for the video because um, I've got a cunning plan about that that could actually work. Um, yeah, I have thought about time stuff again. Like, for example, when they redid all the vanilla zones for Cataclysm, what I wish they'd done, because it makes no sense chronologically, it would have been better if some of those zones had just been used as the Cataclysm zones, but in another time level, like with Blasted Lands. Blasted Lands exists in two time zones, and you could talk to a dragon near the entrance to Blasted Lands, in elf form or something, uh, to switch between the two like types uh, and if they did something like that you don't want to make it too complicated though because again like obviously wow I'm an experienced player so I take things in my stride and I do sometimes think to myself I wonder if a new player gets on with this because again playing other games because I do play other MMOs casually like Lord of the Rings Online uh, I think the level cap for that is about 105 or 110 something like that it's very similar to wow but I'm level 75 on my main on it. I call my main. No such thing as a main when you play this casually. Um, and that was level cap the last time I played it properly. So it's a long time since I played it properly. A few years. And I've gone back into the game. And one thing I've noticed straight away is I don't know where to go to quest. I haven't got a clue where to go to get to the next expansion's worth of quests. So, and that's obviously something that doesn't happen in WoW. It does direct you. So, it does it pretty well. But there might be other aspects of the game that I don't fully appreciate that might be perplexing to a new player that doesn't know what to do. Um, where, you know, that I don't really think about because I, I do. Because all I have to get used to in WoW when things change are literally the new changes. I'm already grounded in the foundation of the game. Um, upsetting when you go and kill an elite for world quest it feels like it takes longer than when you were leveling there are some elites on Argus for world bosses that at the moment I don't know if there's a tuning issue but they're brutal um, because I am used at the moment to going up to an elite mob and basically smashing its face in in a few seconds. It's not even worth me on the Broken Isles for like World Quest elite bosses. It is not even worthwhile me popping wings to kill them. I kill them in seconds. And so I naturally assumed that this was the level my character was at. So when I was trying out Args on the PTR, and it was in the... I think it might be the first week I tried it out actually. Um, maybe the second. Oh yeah, second, because the first week I couldn't finish it, because it kept disconnecting. And uh, and I got my head kicked in. <laughs> Absolutely smashed. But uh, I think when you're leveling, I mean the issue we have when we're leveling, if we've done the last expansion, is we'll have a load of the best gear from that previous expansion. And this is where it also gets really tricky because and if you had scaling, it would make it easier. But you have a situation where... I'm trying to remember now. Like, at the moment... What was our item level at the end of WAD if we had M Mythic Hellfire Citadel gear? I can't remember. Completely forgotten. Would about 740-ish sound right? I can't think. But anyway, you'd have whatever it was... Yeah, I thought about that. But when you level a character up, when you get to level 100, you're probably 
in roughly 600 item level gear. So then we're going to do the Legion starting zones. And at the start of the expansion, when you've got people who were Mythic Raiders in the best gear, you need to have mobs that are going to put up some resistance. They're not just one shot. Well, they're in like 740-ish gear. And then you have uh, some people that have only just dinged. They're in 600 gear. And how do you make it? Not a massive challenge, obviously, for the best geared players, but so that you're not one-shotting mobs. But at the same time, so that it's not too challenging for the lesser geared players, especially as those lesser geared players, you've always got to assume one of them might actually be a brand new player that's leveling up their very first character, so they may not be as skilled in the game either. Um, and I think that's quite difficult. And I also think... So I really think Blizzard should actually have a team because... They could, I don't know, obviously I've got no stats on it or anything. But they easily could be losing potentially new players. Um, can't be just relying on retaining current players. You've got to attract new players in. And, I mean, the only stats where you could make any judgment, I suppose, Blizzard would hold. I, I certainly don't. Um, but it just seems to me that they should, I would just get a few people to think about it. And, and, and just put a team separate to everyone else, not seconded from somewhere else. And just sort of say, you know, look at the level, look at the new player experience, um, because it, it's in dire need of an overhaul. I mean, most aspects of the game, when they're in need of an overhaul, Blizzard are generally pretty good. I might bitch about a few things they do, but they're generally pretty good at, at tackling stuff. Especially again, compared to other MMOs, the only MMO I have played like properly that have done a better job, I think are Elder Scrolls Online, but the only reason for that is because they made such a mess at the launch that, you know, they they were at such a low starting point that um, the fact that they completely turned it around is to their credit, but, you know. I gather Final Fantasy as well had a similar thing, but I've never really got into that. But, I mean, there's plenty of MMOs that don't, like Warhammer Online never did. Um, Star Wars The Old Republic has, yeah, I think has improved. Like, I wasn't at all keen on it. Like, I, I didn't play it when it launched. I had it on beat. I had got the advanced order and was in the beta. Didn't like it. I was very disappointed. Uh, it's a, And I think it's a much better game for the casual now. I don't know what it's like for a serious player. I gather not brilliant. Um, but for a complete casual that's never even leveled a character to level cap, um, yeah, I think it's really good. Really good. But like Warhammer Online, they never tackled the issues they had. Um, it was a complete disaster. It was a bug-ridden and in many ways badly designed game. There were a few real gems about the game, which is why I played it for a decent amount of time. But, you know, the developers never tackled They just decided to abandon it. They never uh, decide. you know, they never had the gumption to just tackle the issues. Lord of the Rings Online, you can argue the same thing. Um, you know, there are there are issues with that game that have not been touched since. And, and these were issues that were not brilliant when it first came out. And something like the combat system is appalling. Absolutely. Well, I mean, it depends what class you play, actually. Like my champion class, it's like playing with ME. You think you're constantly lagging the way, but it's actually how that class plays. Uh, it's just as well it's like the top DPS, otherwise, blimey. ESO is, but at the start, when it first came out, it was dreadful. I was so excited. I have never been so excited for a game coming out as ESO. Because although I wasn't in the proper beta, I used to be, whenever there was a weekend beta, because you could sort of get into those, I was straight into it. I absolutely loved it. All I could do was the starting zone, but I never missed an opportunity when the beta weekend came round to get into it uh, and do it. I was so hyped for it. It came out around, I can't remember exactly when it came out, but I'm pretty sure I got to play a good chunk of it over the summer, so it was around about a summer release. Um, but it was, the levelling became, I mean, there were several things wrong with it. First of all, it was just, oh God. Right, it should be fine again. Um, let me know if it's not. Uh, so, first of all, you'd, there were not that many quests. You had to basically do all the quests to level. 
Um, they, you know, most MMOs have masses and masses of quests. I mean, that's one thing Lord of the Rings Online does amazingly well. You cannot do them all for leveling. For you have to go back at level cap. Uh, there's a stupid number of them. Um, WoW's always been pretty good for that. Um, you know, a lot of MMOs do have more quests than you need, and that's the way it should be. ESO, no. In fact, I remember I went through the first zone. I, went, I was in the second zone. Halfway through, I'm thinking, this is getting a bit tough, this. This is this is getting difficult. And so I went and found out there's a little corner of the first zone that I hadn't done. Uh, and I had to go back to do, do that leveling up. The second thing is dungeons. Uh, I'm all for... Like the dungeons as they were at the start, if they were like that for... There should have been different different difficulties. When you're going to just randomly queue up with people, like LF, LFD in WoW is so basic, it's almost embarrassing, but it's good. Because it allows you to develop a few skills, see some content, and you, uh, and you don't fail. You cannot have a situation where it's failable. And that wasn't the case in ESO. It was actually very challenging, the dungeons. And some people will say that's brilliant. What I would say is that's brilliant for a group of people that are either in a guild or friends and are going to push through it and are not going to give up. And there should be a different difficulty for that. With better rewards, of course. Uh, but there should be a complete easy mode just to let you learn the skills. Not something where it's impossible to die, but where, you know, as long as you're paying a, some attention, you'll get away with it. Um, so yeah, ESO didn't do that well. And then the other thing is, you had to finish the main quest lines in each zone. Never mind you need to do all the quests anyway just for to get up level. You need to do every um, the main quest line to even be able to get to the next zone. So there was one in particular, there were a couple of quests in particular that were bugged and bugged for days. People just couldn't do them. The, the odd person would get lucky and could do them. But the vast majority couldn't. You'd see them in general just go, oh, is it, is it working for you? Is it working for you? For days on end. And, and I did get to level cap, even though when I, you know, finished the very last quest, which I had to still carry on. Um, I had to grind mobs to get to level 50, which is the cap, before I could actually do the proper last quest. And then all that happened was... They told you, oh, that's great. Now go and do this veteran stuff, which is where you do the other factions leveling zones, but it's harder. And it's like, no, 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 no. So I left at that point. So there's been a massive turnaround in it now. It's way better game. And it's actually, it's gone from having a lot of promise, but like being crap, to actually being a really good game. I don't know what it's like for a serious player, but for a casual player, it's amazing and also as a casual player you can go into it and uh, leave it for a few months and come back and pick up because they do have scaling in every zone you can be like you know what what happened what well, I came back and then there was some quest to go to Rothgar something like this orc zone thing and I was just able to go there it didn't matter I had quests in other places I could just go there and then you can just do what you want in any order you want. And it's brilliant. Um, yeah, I mean, the, you know, difficult. Like, I think there should be some, like, people moan about LFR in WoW. But LFR, I think, is is good. I mean, although it doesn't do me any favours, it's good that it's in the game. Because I think for a casual, there should be some content where you can practice out some skill it's not about seeing the content from my point of view you're not seeing the content lfr isn't raided it's not but it allows you to to do things in a different way than you can do when you're soloing um and it's important that stuff like that is in the game uh, and i you know and i think it should be for all mmos there should be some bargain basement piss easy content um and then have an optional, more difficult version of it for guild groups, friend groups, that sort of thing, uh, which is more challenging, you know. And I, and I think they should all do that. I think that's something WoW gets really right. You know, I think there is a reason why World of Warcraft still continues to be the MMO that sets the the, the scene. And I know some people are 
Uh, I've forgotten words now. They don't like... If, if you're not a WoW fan, there's a lot of MMO players really don't like WoW because it was so successful that it made it more difficult for MMOs coming after it to do something differently because everyone saw the WoW model as being the successful popular model. And I suppose if people are going to spend a lot of money on MMO, um, they want some assurance that it's going to be some s successful. And that's, I think there's only two ways you get that assurance. One is when it's uh, an established brand. So obviously World of Warcraft had an established brand to begin with, Warcraft. Um, ESO had an established brand, so that was always going to be at least initially successful. Star Wars obviously did, Lord of the Rings Online did. Um, but you know totally unique MMOs tend to go into very safe but rubbish uh, modes of gameplay because they don't risk it but yeah look at this I mean I mean I'm being cautious I keep running out because I'm thinking I keep thinking oh you know to the, all the nasty abilities these bosses have on Illidari Council I'm thinking to myself oh I need to move away from that and everyone else who doesn't have a clue what's going on is just staying in it and they're fine. Um, and I'm just thinking, yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> it's, it's mental. I don't know. What are my thoughts on Draenei? Depends what it'd been in luck or in terms of what their place in the game. In terms of luck, my thoughts are I'd never play a male Draenei. My thoughts now would be, I do have technically a Draenei law-wise. Um, well, obviously, they're, we're going to be... Uh, they're, they're allowing this link now with Argus in a way that we wouldn't have had before. I think they're... Of all the races, they're the ones with the most interesting background, but that we haven't really explored properly. And this is why, for me, it's a bit of a disappointment that Argus is not going to be a full expansion, that it's only going to be a patch. I'm trying to steer clear of spoilers here because um, we haven't really explored much of the Draenei background in the game or in any games, whether, it's, whether it be the Warcraft RTSs or whether it actually just be um, uh, World of Warcraft. So it would have been nice to have had a full old expansion of it. And it could have been one that followed this. But it was not to be. So that's unfortunate. And then Illidan himself was a piece of piss. So yeah, I completely wasted several thousand people's time doing those uh, that boss advice for Black Temple before it came out. Because it's a nonsense. I'm not sure. I don't even know how. Like, there's, I suppose if you pull a boss with a load of trash, not everyone's going to cope the way we did. But I really can't see how people would wipe on these bosses. Uh, Tauren have no business being paladins. The only reason they are is... I mean, Blizzard sort of painted themselves into a corner, didn't they? They came in, in with vanilla, with paladins as alliance only and shamans as horde only. And that totally made sense gameplay-wise. And you've got to remember, when WoW came out, MMO... I mean, that's the thing, like... I was watching a video, Lazy Peon. I still follow him, even though he doesn't do WoW stuff so much now. Um, but he's really good to watch. And he was talking about, he was looking at, no, it wasn't a recent video, sorry. It was about a year ago. And he was talking about, is the MMO genre dying? And he was looking up um, search terms for Google and having a look at how they've trended over uh, time. And he's noticed that the term MMORPG has obviously declined quite a bit and MOBA has sort of gone up. Um, now, although I think probably MMOs are in a bit of decline in general, I don't think that search was the right one to look at because, and this is the key thing, when World of Warcraft started, and it wasn't the first MMO, of course, we called them MMORPGs. 
Now we just call them MMOs because a lot of the RPG element is gone. But at the time, the RPG was a very... It's not just a shortened version of MMORPG. They actually are just our MMOs. A lot of the RPG is gone. So, But it was there. So Alliance, Paladins, Horde, Shamers, totally made sense. Then when they started getting serious for the expansion TBC and class balance became a thing, for example, they made sure that all classes had a sensible DPS spec, which was not always the case and the, also the so-called tanky ones had a sensible spec as well. The Paladin Protection Tree in Vanilla was an actual joke tree. It was a bit like the Arcane Mage one. You know, the Arcane Mage talent tree included talents that did such things as increased your wand damage. So there were certain specs that were just jokes. You played them for a joke. And um, the... So they had to sort all that out. And obviously part of that balancing process, which was hardly ideal in TBC, but they did try, was the fact that you cannot have um, you cannot have a class that is faction specific. Because paladins and shamans, although they they weren't the same, they brought different things. Uh, massively different things. So obviously Shamans had your Windfury Totem. Paladins had Blessing of Salvation. Each of those things was really powerful, but for different things. Um, so they obviously had to allow Shamans to be Alliance and Paladins to be Horde. So for Shamans becoming Alliance, they brought in the Drenai. That sort of you could buy. It is a little weird, it has to be said. Paladins as Drenai totally makes sense. Shamans, little weird, but you could buy it, you could get it. And I think part of the reason why you could get it is because the Drenai hadn't actually been properly fleshed out at that point in the game. But Paladins for Horde, totally different now. So they first of all had to bring in the Blood Elves, which really as a race should have been Alliance because they were Alliance during Warcraft 3 when they, when they weren't called Blood Elves then. Um, so having them join Horde, see there was weirdness there, and then having them as Paladins was another layer of weirdness, which they, and they had to, I don't, did they even bother to explain why Blood Elves joined Horde? Maybe they did, and I just can't remember. Um, but, you know, so there was that. But then obviously there came a point where they realised, look, that Alliance only had one option for Shamans because they had to fudge that to even make it possible. And and Horde only had one option for Paladins and that was a huge fudge. So they wanted some variety in there. So they had then Dwarf Shamans, which actually, again, it's one of those... Okay, fine. Um, and then you had Tor and Paladins, which is... Uh, no... No, 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 but they did it anyway. Yeah, they've been bringing out PTR bills quite rapidly. I think there's been one in, one each week since it came out. Um, yeah, I don't think we're going to get new <laughs> character models for those. They've only just redone them, haven't they? But... Um, Yeah, we say Sylvanas helps them, but why would the Blood Elves want anything to do with Sylvanas? Because that's... Is this a spoiler? Not a spoiler. I'm not going to tell you what happens on Argus, but an obvious question on Argus is, like, Sylvanas, of course, is one of three sisters, the Windrunner sisters. So there's Sylvanas, who is now a Banshee. There is the other one whose name I forget, but she's been involved in the Broken Shore. Um, and then there's Illyria, who disappeared in Warcraft 2. So Illyria, at this point in time, has no idea that Sylvanas is undead. So, yeah, that, Verisa, that's it, yeah. Um, but yeah, Illyria has no notion that Sylvanas what's happened to Sylvanas, how could she? She disappeared in Warcraft 2 and hasn't been seen since. Sylvanas became Banshee in Warcraft 3. 
So that's a bit of a going to be a bit of a surprise, and I, it's not a spoiler because I don't actually know. I don't know whether that storyline of the meat of of being told is going to um, be developed in Legion, or whether that's going to wait for the next expansion. But presumably, if well, assuming Illyria even comes back to Azeroth, I don't even know whether that's going to happen. Then that has got to be tackled at some point. Um, but so yeah, it's, it doesn't make sense that the elves would side with Sylvanas, even though what happened to her was not her fault. It's not like she tried to become undead; it was totally against her will. And in actual fact, they should be kinder to her because. She did it trying to defend her homeland anyway. Um, but nonetheless, there's a, that's why the, the, she calls her undead band the Forsaken, because they are forsaken amongst their brethren. So there's all sorts of dodginess to it. And it's like, it's really weird, because you get some people who say the storylines in, in Warcraft are really, really good, and Blizzard do a really good job of it. And some people who take the totally opposite view, and I'm sort of in agreement with both sides, really, because it's good that they get people to write the novels and really flesh out a lot of this, um, uh, a lot of this stuff. But the other side of it is they get very, very lazy with their writing. I mean, a lot of it is nicked from other things anyway. Their major storylines, and um, and and then they don't really think. It is inconsistent, and that's why the—I mean, they just—that's where the term retconning comes from. They just—they just decide, oh, we're just going to change it, which is sort of okay because it's a game at the end of the play, day, and the gameplay has to come first. But um, well, this is why I wanted to read. I haven't yet sat down and read my first version of Chronicles yet. Obviously, there's two volumes out now. They've announced the third volume is going to come out at some point. Um, yeah, exactly. Chronicles was supposed to be setting it all in stone. And that's why when some I was reading some of the Argus stuff and experiencing some of it, I was thinking, hmm, that seems strange. I want to read Warcraft Chronicles again. So, yeah, I'm glad you said that because I, I haven't read it again yet. I, I need to read it this summer to get it right in my own mind. But, yeah, it did seem a little odd. Anyway, that one, that one appears to have been finito. Ah, what, what, what's there? I've lost my cursor. I hate having two monitors. I'm not used to it. But, um... It is strange because they must have been planning this storyline when they were bringing out that first Warhammer, Warhammer, Warcraft Chronicles. Anyway, so don't know. Really strange. Um, anyway, sorry, uh, Ragnall. How do I feel about Night Elf Paladins? Keeps you up in the Order Hall. Same way I feel about any other type of pa like Paladins. Really human in terms of the original storyline. I'm okay with dwarfs being Paladins, and I'm okay with Drenai being Paladins. That totally makes sense. Uh, anything else as a paladin, law-wise, doesn't make sense. If they want to do it, you know, I'm I'm okay with gameplay trumping law. Not the dev, you know, not dev. Behave yourself, community manager. Uh, but you know, storylines. Hi, cabbage. Um. Yeah. Oh, the art. Yeah, the art is. Um. I mean, the art team in terms of games, but also whenever they do like these sort of books. Is always spectacular. It's a shame, actually. What I would really like is if they, when you got these books, if there was a code in it that allowed you to download those images as like wallpapers, so I could use them in my videos and stuff like that, or even just have them as wallpaper on my, uh, in my what you call it. But yeah, the art is good. The music, I always forget about the music. There's a couple of reasons. One is. I always have the music on when I'm playing a game in like beta, um, but then I get, when I'm playing it live, I turn it off because it's just a distraction I don't need, usually because I've got other music on in the background anyway. And the other thing is uh, they don't seem to release the albums in any form I can download. Like I would love to have the Wrath of the Lich King album, music album, and the mop, and all of them in fact. You know, um, I'm assuming they're available on iTunes, but I don't have Apple stuff, so that's no good to me. They certainly, well, I, I don't see them. 
They don't show up on Amazon, for example, if I look on their digital music library. Uh, don't really understand how the light works. But why can't someone just follow the light and become one? Um, it's more not. It's not so much a matter that there's, there's something to stop those individual races. I mean, that's another thing about World of Warcraft, where this is why we sort of say this race doesn't really work for this class, because the game is actually quite racist. All the different races all adhere to a particular stereotype. So it's not that, in theory, elves couldn't become attuned to the light. It's the fact that elves don't do that. They're not into that sort of thing. Um, so that's why I... So yeah, th there's nothing in theory that stops an elf becoming a paladin. Um, it's just that it's not what they do. It's just like like when when they made night elf mages, that was totally against the law because night elves are the ones who know how dangerous the arcane is. They stuck, even though they cast some arcane magic as, as druids, but they stuck to like their nature magic, the druid type stuff. Um, so they complete, they utterly mistrust mages. So then to get night elf mages made no sense. Now in theory you could say to yourself, well this is like a night elf who's broken away from normal night elf society. He's decided or she's decided, ah load of rubbish, there's so many mages anyway, what difference is one more going to make? Um, and, and all the rest of it. But yeah, the game itself is very racist. They all behave the same. Yeah, well, obviously they had to come up with some storyline um, with TBC. Uh, the reason with Torrens, I can't remember. I say I can't remember, I don't actually know. I strongly suspect to know would be you'd have to actually play a Tauren Paladin. Or, because they were brought in in Cataclysm, weren't they? I wasn't playing the game at the start of Cataclysm. Weren't there High Elf Priests? Priests, yes. But again, they don't use what in Warcraft terms is the arcane like magic magic that's like nature stuff is fine and healing magics but not fire like elemental magic that sort of stuff because that's what's attracted the demons in the first place to Azeroth you know that's what caused all the trouble um, with the assault of the burning legion on Azeroth so they sort of shunned it Well, they started worshipping the moon instead, didn't they? And getting their energy from that. Instead of the sun, well, they, they weaned themselves off it. Whereas the High Elves, which eventually became the Blood Elves, if I got that right, they didn't wean themselves off it. They were really struggling. Oh, becoming Paladins. Yeah, but... Mm, yeah, but... I mean, the other thing is, Paladins are not just like holy warriors like they are in a lot of MMOs. In the game's term, the paladins were priests that were, or, you know, that took, you know, took on the mantle of like warrior knight in order to beat back the horde. They were there with us, you know, they were there specifically to form a sort of dad's army against the horde. So it's an order of knights, really, paladins, rather than being a specific thing. They, well, well, some of them were, some of them weren't. So Uther was a priest. Turalyon wasn't. He was a he was a knight. Some of them were knights, actually, martial warriors. Some of them were priests, and then they sort of combined the two. Well, yeah, I mean, they, the 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 Drenai work. You know, they sort of are friends with the Naru and stuff like that, which is. Uh, all like beings of the light, so it works with Drenai, that sort of makes sense. Like the the other alliance races that have become paladins, it's you sort of if you blink a few times you can sort of make it work. It's just the horde ones like mm, But you, you I don't make a fuss about it because I understand it's needed for gameplay reasons. You know, you've got to I can't on the one hand complain when Blizzard don't balance things properly, and on the other hand, expect them to 
put stuff in the game that's going to make it impossible to balance. So I, I'm perfectly happy to gameplay to trump storyline. But only when it's necessary. It's a bit like with the uh, Lord of the Rings films, wasn't it? There's some stuff obviously that had to be changed because it was a film uh, rather than a book. And then there were some things that were just changed just because Peter Jackson and his fellow writers wanted to put their mark on it. They can't help themselves. They just changed it for the sake of changing it. And it had nothing to do with pacing or anything like that. Yes. Yeah, exactly. It's just an order of knights, really, rather than a specific thing like a... a or th well, I mean, like Turalyon, for example, even he was a paladin before he even had his paladin powers because he, he was known as being very bad at controlling the light. Until Lothar fell, all of a sudden, that was a different matter then. It unleashed it unleashed the light then. And in fact, that's why Uther is called the Light Bringer because it was Uther that encouraged Turalyon. Uh, it was Turalyon that gave him that title because he saw Uther as being the guy who brought the light to him. can't actually remember the names of most of the starting parties and the only ones I can remember are the ones who featured significantly in the games. So you've got Uther, Turalyon and Tyrion and then there were another two or three ones whose names I can't even remember. Um, was Alex... no hold on. What was the name of... which Mograine was the daddy one? The one who first wielded the Ashbringer. I'm not sure if he was a paladin or not. He may have been. I don't, I'm not sure he was in the first... It was Alexandros. Who's the other brother then? Can't remember. But I'm not sure if he was one of the starting paladins or not. Adric, was it? I thought there was another one. Oh, I'm not sure. Yeah, um, I'm, no, Darian, yeah, Darian was the other one. Darian was the one who stabbed himself with the Ashbringer, and that's how it became corrupted, and he turned into a Death Knight. Tyrion, yeah, useless paladin. Forgot to bubble. Or maybe he did what I do sometimes. Every now and then, I don't take divine intervention, and then when I know I'm about to die, I... Think to myself, it's okay, divine interventional proc. Then it doesn't because I haven't got it and I just die. Uh, which is always vaguely embarrassing. I'm pretty sure there was another one, but I can't remember now. That's... Oh, he may well have forgot to respec as well, you know. Reno, that's it. Yes, that's the one. I remember now. Um... So yeah, Alexandros then. So, but yeah, I can't remember if he's one. But I know there are at least a couple of paladins whose names I always forget because they have played no significant part in at least World of Warcraft. Maybe they did in Warcraft 2. I don't know. I didn't play Warcraft 2 very much. I played the, the campaign through, but I didn't actually like the game. So the storyline was okay. It was a much better one than Warcraft 1. Which was just Balva um no. Well, hang on. No, it wasn't, was it? He certainly wasn't one of the first ones. I'm trying to think. I mean Balvar of course all you I think he only came into the game, as I recall. And obviously a lot of my Warcraft 2 and 3 stuff will be quite sketchy now. Um, really as Regent after the disappearance of Varian. Because right from the start of World of Warcraft, Varian was, had been captured, so he was gone. <laughs> well, it may have just been like a, a, a warrior stomp thing. 
shockwave or something. I don't know. But um, he may have been. I'm not sure. But he, I, he, I'm pretty sure he was not one of the original paladins. I'd be quite certain of that. Yes. I mean, there were other paladins that appeared afterwards. But I'm just trying to think in terms of the original ones. And certainly Uthar, Turalyon and Tyrion were the key ones. Or the more no notable ones anyway. I'm not sure about Alexandros. So now all that's really left of them is Turalyon. Who's coming back to us? Well, presumably, again, he may not actually come back to Azeroth. We're going to meet him on Argus. Doesn't necessarily mean he's going to come back. He might bugger off somewhere else. Uther and, well, there you go then. So it didn't include um, Mograine. So, uh, yeah, I thought there were about five. Yeah, well, the thing is, if you're going to do a game, you've got to think up a load of names on the spot. Um, there are two, two good sources to use. One is Tolkien, which is where most fantasy authors get their stuff from. And the other one is, is uh, use historical names. Because it is quite tricky to think of um, names all, on the spot all the time, isn't it? But yeah, as I say, you know, I mean, the next patch should be very, very storyline heavy. But it is just, I just think it's a shame that it's going to be a storyline that's in the end inconsequential because it's not going to add to anything in the game because whatever storyline is on Argus is going to start and end on Argus it's going to finish in one path so for the next expansion it'll all be concluded whereas I would think it would be nicer if it maybe finished off some storylines but opened other ones for future years but I don't think it's going to do that I think it's all just I think it's tying up loose ends tidying things off <clears throat> what's Thrall doing sitting in a corner crying he's, he's just become yeah, he used to be green Jesus now he's just a pathetic figure isn't he I mean I, I did this in the alpha as well so I knew about this anyway but I just recently did the artifact quest for the doom hammer on my shamer because I want to level my shaman up and it's pathetic. You know, you pick up the hammer. And apparently after just picking it up, you're already better attuned to it than he ever was. And it's like, hang on a minute. Aren't you supposed to be the greatest shaman in the world? On many worlds, in fact. Rubbish. Absolute rubbish. So, yeah, he's now a complete irrelevance. He's a hermit. He's got a kid who's growing up to learn that his father is a complete loser. I don't think we've... I've, I don't really know, because obviously I don't play Horde when I can help it. So I don't actually know if they've done anything with his kid. I know we saw Agra again for the shame and quest line, but not his, uh, not his nipper. I, I was wondering if they were developing him for... A future role in in world of warcraft maybe a future leader of the horde again maybe his son ends up leading the horde again when the when they've finished having stupid leaders for it because sylvanas has got no business um no business at all doing anything with uh, horde leadership do i think they'll ever bring back the wad people to help us out god i hope not that was another thing that made no sense. I know they abandoned Wad because it was clearly going to be a complete sack of potatoes regardless of what they did. But we went from a position like, I don't understand why we were allowing Gromash not only to fight by our side on Archimonde, 
But to stand on those steps and be part of the celebration, it's like, it really doesn't matter that he got... The only reason he joined us is because we basically showed him we were strong. That was it. Um, it doesn't excuse all the evil he did earlier on. We should have been given a right smack. We shouldn't have let him down off that tree. Or spike or whatever it was that, uh, that the fell lord had him attached to. We should have left him up there. Absolute nonsense. Well, they, they'll have to forget about Thrall because he no longer has a role, does he? You know? He's... He's not even all that influential in the Horde. Because all his original... Um, like, allies are dead. So he's now a complete irrelevance. Other than, I suppose, his position within the Earthen Ring... But even that must be much reduced now. He can't even, you know, he's, he's had some usurper come along and do even better with his, um, with his hammer. Well, Wad Law, the problem with it is you had two things which I think are a fairly bad idea. One was time travel. You have to be a little bit careful with time travel. Like when they've done Caverns of Time stuff in the past, that's sort of been okay. Um, but you have to be a little bit careful of it. And then you've also got alternate universe. So it's time travel, alternate universe. Those are two things that you need. Even Doctor Who, which trades in time travel, has always been a little bit wary of doing alternate universe stuff. They've done a few stories with that. Um, it can get very tricky very quickly. So to do a whole expansion on it was obviously going to be a nonsense at the end of it all. Absolute nonsense. And the worst of it is it's completely buggered up Gul'dan because it's it must be difficult for players who are not versed in the ancient older lore of the game what Gul'dan is because they'll just think Gul'dan is, is the Gul'dan we've had in Legion when he's not. Our Gul'dan died in Warcraft 2. So, and I still haven't found him either in, an, uh, in the Tomb of Sargeras. I still haven't come across him. I came across his rune. I used his rune to kill some people. You can sneak past trash with it, it's great. And then someone killed me. Well, I killed them at the same time. It ended up being... They, I killed them when they realised... Well, they attacked me, to be fair. And then I killed them when they realised they were going to die. They just pulled a load of trash onto me. Um, now, I did kill someone on the way to Harjatan. I didn't mean I, I I didn't mean that. That was actually an accident. No, it was on the way to Sisters. I killed one person that that was innocent. The rest of them were not. They attacked me first. I was a good Gul'dan, mostly. But yeah, I haven't actually found his corpse yet. Oh, I see what you mean. Mm. Well, I'll have another look then. But I didn't see it. I suppose it's a fairly short distance down to Hydratan. But yeah, it's it must be yeah, it all it's confusing. You put alternate universe in and you are gonna generate confusion. Uh they never should have done it. You should steer well clear of that in a game like this. Well clear of it. I mean my view of it, what this is what I thought, and I don't know whether I'm right in this or not. I my, myself, I thought to myself, okay, so in TBC, you concluded a storyline, a very popular storyline that started in uh, Warcraft 3. Then Wrath of the Lich King, you concluded another storyline that started in Warcraft 3. Again, another very popular one. So TBC and Wrath, like sometimes people talk about, 
the fact that the popularity of WoW tailed off after Wrath and they blame various aspects of the gameplay and game design and stuff like that. And some of it may be true or not, it's very difficult to say. But one thing I would say is, TBC and Wrath were still early enough in the game that there would still be in a lot of Warcraft 3 players that were fired up by their storylines. And, and so those storylines were big attractions to those two expansions. After that, there weren't really any popular storylines that were unresolved. I mean, there's any number of things you could do it on, and, and there's still things they haven't resolved, but not hugely popular storylines. Um, so then you had Cataclysm, what is whatever it was. Then Mop. Now, Mop I really liked because it had genuinely new lore. Although Pandaren, like Chen Storm, started featuring Warcraft 3, and Pandaria was referred to in the Wandering Owl, all the rest of it. It had never actually been done in the game, um, so you didn't really know much about it. So then we got a whole expansion with a whole new set of races and storylines and histories and cultures and stuff like that, which I thought was fantastic. I loved it. Um, everything was really good about Miss, apart from the dailies. The dailies did my head in. However, we'll forgive them for that, as soon as I don't have to do it anymore. Then, but what a lot of people were saying was the fact that it was new, they didn't like it. They just wanted to regurgitate old Warcraft stuff. I remember Preach himself saying in a video, I don't know who these people are, so I don't care about them. And it's like, it's not like they weren't explained in that expansion. It's just what he meant was they hadn't been previously in the game. Well, nothing. Arthas wasn't previously in the game until Warcraft 3. Illidan wasn't previously in the game until he, he was brought in then as well. Um, I don't understand why people think it was a good idea to have new storylines in Warcraft 3, but not in World of Warcraft. So, but anyway, so I got in my head that Blizzard got a bit stung by that and thought to themselves, right, okay, so you just want old Warcraft storylines, do you? Uh, okay, unfortunately, most of the people from the original Warcraft games are dead. Um, what are we going to do about that? I know, alternate universe time. So then they, it's like, okay, you really like all these old lore characters. Have all of them in one expansion. Uh, and that's what WAD seemed to me to like. And also remember they did WAD and Legion at the same... They were in parallel. And they said they actually could have gone either way with them. They could have done Legion first and then WAD. And well, WAD then Legion. The reason why they chose to go WAD first is because it was supposed to coincide with the launch of the Warcraft film. But then the Warcraft film was put back a year. So that cocked that up. Um, and then Legion, of course, is also harking back to old lore. So both of those expansions that come after MOP were, were based on old law. Um, so it's almost like they've decided that it's not worth doing new stuff in World of Warcraft, which is a shame. Um, yes, I, I, I saw the thing about Volume 3 uh, announcement. I am hoping that when they do Warcraft Chronicles and, you know, I hope they miss out WAD completely. I absolutely hope they completely miss it out. Um. Oh yeah, that is a point. They're going to have to explain Gul'dan, aren't they? God. Uh, they can't comp... No, oh, no. It's going to be a mess, isn't it? The problem is you can't just replace Gul'dan with Garrosh. Because Garrosh is a warrior. He's not a... He needed someone who can summon things. Like, yeah, Gul'dan was not just a powerful orc. He was specifically a warlock. And... and... See you later, Vestus. We're not that far away from the end anyway. We usually just do it for a couple of hours. Um, yeah. Yeah, I can't imagine what I would do if I had to write whichever Warcraft Chronicles has got to cover what. what an, they're obviously going to have to embellish it. 
What an absolute disaster. Mind you, I haven't read the novels around it. Usually there's novels written around it that flesh out a few things. Some of which actually contradict. I will be very curious to read the Warcraft 3 one because I remember, for example, someone... What was it now? Someone telling me that in the novel when Arthur's put on the the crown that Arthas basically dominated um, Nezul, which didn't make any sense to me because when you look at the storyline in the gameplay, it's you sort of know they're both there, but Nezul is the controlling influence, especially in Warcraft 3. So that you know, to be told that didn't make a great deal of sense to me. But, mm, yeah, I mean, Wad was just, I mean, Wad was a mess for all sorts of reasons. The only good thing that came out of it was uh, the raiding. The raiding is always, is well, most tiers have been very good. Two Mosargeras isn't shaping up at the moment to be one of my favorites, I have to say, though. Even though, in most respects, you know, my, my initial review, based on the normal heroic, was quite complimentary. I thought it was actually very good. Uh, Garrosh is the best fit for Wad's Gul'dan for Wad. But not for Legion. Because the problem is they're going to have to follow it up with the story of Legion. And that... They have to have Gul'dan in it. Because although Gildan, fair enough, didn't do a lot in Wad. Um, mind you, we did summon up the Hellfire Citadel. I don't think Garrosh could have done that. Uh, the prune, well, yeah, I don't know. Like, in terms of number of abilities, in terms of sp specific abilities, there are some abilities I wouldn't have minded losing and some others I didn't want to lose. So in terms of choice of pruning... I could query it. In terms of the amount of pruning, like I said, I mean, earlier on when I was talking about when I go back to Lord of the Rings Online now, that could do with an ability prune. There's there's so many abilities there that you don't need that many. Um, that you're just repeating yourself. Um, so, I'm not opposed to the pruning. Excuse me. Uh, and we still have way more abilities than we had in vanilla and TBC. Like when I was watching some of those Black Temple videos from, from TBC time that, uh, of myself. It was like all my abilities, I didn't have a UI, customized UI or anything. All my abilities were on one bar. Um, like my, the ones that I'd used in combat at any rate. And that's because that's all you needed. It wasn't very many. So we've still got way more than that. Um, judgment speed boost. Wow. They don't want us having that. Uh, the auras could have been made better. Auras and seals both could have just been reworked to do something useful. Uh, straightforward. They just needed to make them useful. But I don't like the fact that we lost, say, Devotion Aura. Because although if I were to put that criticism to Blizzard, they would probably just say, oh, well, yeah, we want essentially healers to have those sort of defensive raid-wide abilities. Uh, I might then say, so why do demon hunters and warriors have them then? Um, so I, it annoys me that paladins who are known as a buffing class don't anymore. Uh, Hammer of Wrath would be nice. But I don't think they're going to relent on that. If I'm honest. See, there's some things where you get the impression... I mean, obviously, we don't know. We are not. We can't be a fly on the wall of their meetings. Sometimes they will come up with an idea for something, and then later on they'll reflect on it and decide, actually, it's not really works as they intended, and they'll change it. Fair enough. Sometimes they get so much criticism for something that they stick to their guns, I feel, and then stubbornly stick with a bad situation just to avoid losing face. Um, and some of the issues, Hammer of Wrath actually wasn't one of them, 
But some of the criticism that came Blizzard's way regarding Retribution Paladins in particular during the Alpha and Beta means that even though it's a different person in charge now, that they're not going to move quickly on some of the things that they were very badly attacked for. Just because, as I say, it makes them look a bit silly. Well, that is it, isn't it? It's iconic abilities that we lost. Um, so, Garrosh escapes Mop's prison has been led by the Shadow Council Burning Blade Warlocks. Survive with hints to go to Tomb of Sargeras. Uh, but Gul'dan summons things. Like, I don't... Like, what would the Legion get Garrosh to do? What could he actually do? They're not using him as a lead. I mean, Gul'dan wasn't used just because he was a leader. They could have got a, a, a Dreadlord. Dreadlords are the leaders for the Legion. They would have just put a Dreadlord in charge if it was just for that. It's because of some particular power they have, and Garrosh doesn't have the power. He has the power to swing an axe around. Fell Lords can do that. I, I really don't see that the Legion would see any potential in Garrosh for anything. He didn't even drink the blood. So he wasn't even green. Uh, I'm not sure that was the point of Ward. I mean, obviously, the fi I th I saw it as him trying to redeem his horde, as he saw it. And obviously, his father was the obvious one to do it through. But I just saw it as him wanting to make his orc horde again, where he'd failed on Azeroth. But obviously Garrosh is no lover of the Legion. But yeah, I don't know. I don't, it wouldn't make any sense anyway. They might as well if they've got if they've got to do the story of Wad at all, they might as well do it with Gul'dan. It makes more sense. And if you're gonna you know, you can't improve that storyline. It's like trying to polish a turd, you know. Uh, you're just going to have to accept it for what it is. He was, yes. Well, but again, I don't understand what the Legion would see, what usefulness the Legion would see in Garrosh. Like, what use is he? Anyway, we'll, leave, we'll, we'll come to the last few minutes. Obviously, anyone wants to throw anything into the hat there, we'll go through those. Uh, we're coming up to the two-hour mark now. I'll say I need to actually... I've said in that uh, third Heroic Tim Sargeras video, um, if they haven't seen the first two, I've directed them towards the playlist, but unfortunately, they're not in the playlist yet, so I need to sort that out tonight. But yeah... I, why don't I like Mythic Tomb of Sargeras? Because um, it's... First of all, they've kept changing it, so people have to keep changing the strategy on the boss they've already killed. But that's for other people. From my own personal point of view, there's a, there's a, a particular issue where it's very, very far away from bring the player, not the class. Uh, and it's not just that my particular class is largely useless on the last few bosses. It's just in general, just in terms of like trying to recruit for our guild. We have got a roster of fairly good players now. We've we already made a better start of Tumasar Garrus than we did of Nighthold. That may not continue 
because there's a big difference. Like, there could be another guild that's on our level, say, but because it's got a few rogues um, and stuff like, you know, and, and like the, the stronger classes, even if all the players, Hierokondo, although unfortunately you've come at the end, uh, even if the players are the same, that guild's going to do better. It's going to make faster progress at the end of the tier than we will. Um, and it makes it it makes it annoying on several levels. As a retribution paladin, it makes it annoying because if I'm in on any of the last three bosses for progress, um, I know I'm not going to be of use. I may, I'm not saying there'll be anyone on the bench more useful. If that's the situation, I will bench myself. What I mean is that I, I'm not actually suitable for those fights. That's really bad. They shouldn't actually allow any class to be unsuitable for any fight, but certainly not three in a row, and especially the last three. Um, even if they see the nerf bat, the, the issue will still be that like, you, you can't redesign... You can nerf, say, Avatar, and you could all those last three bosses. You can nerf all of them, but we are still, as a, as a spec, as a class, worth less because of our single target da Our single target damage makes us not that useful on Maiden. You can take us on Maiden because Maiden's not supposed to be all that difficult. It's more mechanics rather than DPS, so we'd be okay. Avatar, completely different point of view, different situation, entirely different situation. Uh, we'll be appalling on that. And as for Kill Jaden, we're really good at heroic Kill Jaden, but the thing that makes us good at heroic Kill Jaden isn't going to be happening on Mythic. So, British and a European guild, all guild, you, you, they're all European guilds. Uh, most raiding guilds on English speaking realms are a mixture of North European countries. So, they're all a mixture of like British. Um, Dutch, Scandinavian type uh, players with a few from Eastern and Central Europe as well. Uh, has one of my students ever recognised you from my videos? Yes. But only because they've tried looking me up. Uh, students will sometimes, because that's the mode of, of people of that age now, they try and look you up on social media, they'll try and you up on Facebook and then they'll just naturally come across my YouTube channel. Nothing I can do about it. Nighthold was better because no class was um, ineligible for bits of Nighthold. Some classes were still better than others, and you'd still want several of a particular class. But any class could work. No, none of my current... Well, I say I haven't got any current students because um, we're finished the year now. I'll get new ones in September. But, uh, well, actually, that's not true. Some of them are going to the second year. Um, I don't know any of my current students that play well. They just come across me. So, yeah, that, I mean, that's the issue. But the, just as a general issue, there are, there are guilds who are already on those bosses. There are top Retribution Paladins who have re-rolled Rogue. I mean, really good players of that spec. They've had to re-roll a different class to be able to play. Um, that's just mental. That shouldn't happen. That should never happen. You know, if you've got someone who's not very good at the spec and decides to re-roll to one that they can do better on, that's one thing. Um, and as I say, if someone chooses, like, you could easily have a situation where Retribution Paladin chose to re-roll Rogue because they knew that Rogues are always good, Rets are not always good, so okay. But when you're doing it because you are literally not going to get to do any progress as your spec, not because you think the other class is better, but because your own spec is of negative use, um, that should never happen. And that is the mark of a bad tier. Doesn't, you know, that they should never have allowed that. Um, that would be weird if one of my students uh, applied to my guild, but it's not going to happen. Because none of them are. I don't know. It's not just up to me. Ultimately, it's up to our raid leader who gets in anyway. I just have to try and find people. Now, I'm un I'm incorruptible. Well, I, I wouldn't want to main any other character. I mean, people keep saying to me, oh, why don't you just roll rogue? It's like, no. 
Um, I, you know, I've been through tougher times than this anyway. If the worst came to worst, and I could actually recruit some suitable replacements for those last three bosses, and wasn't in on the last three bosses, well, to hell with it. I'll just hope that Argus is better. I will just hope that Blizzard recognise that it was a cock up, and they don't repeat it. Because to be fair, the previous, the other raids in this tier have been fine. You know, even Hellfire Citadel was fine. You know, Emerald Nightmare was fine for, for class balance. Um, the other ones have been fine. It's, this is the first one in a while that hasn't. Probably since um, Mythic Blackhand. Even then I was in on it because when you're in a guild that's a little bit behind on progress, we were like round about 200. In the, I think we got 225 in the end. We had Obviously we had a slow time on the last two bosses because of our particular roster. And that's another annoying thing. Like, so and it's just really annoying when your world rank can be determined by the particular classes in your roster, not this player skill. So you can actually get up to a certain point and then miss out. And it's always the last couple of bosses that require class stacking. If any bosses require class stacking, it's usually the latter ones. And then you get overtaken by the ones who happen to have those classes. Um, there is a, well I, I mean a lot of things reset in terms of the character investment uh, when an expansion starts again I mean I could easily like re-roll for the next expansion I know you invest a lot in it it's very difficult to catch up especially if you're not going to put a lot of time into it mid expansion but for a new expansion, everything sort of reset anyway. So I'm not sure how much is actually in it. But I'm, I'm going to need to recruit people anyway. As I say, we've had a couple of people leave. We've got several people off on holiday, um, some for longer than others. Oh, does, oh, I certainly, no, I'm not a completionist at all. I will do whatever seems reasonable. Um, I, you know, it's very much a reward against, uh, like, input calculation I do. If something's worth the reward, then I'll do it, but otherwise I don't. I don't do it just for the sake of it. But anyway, um, so ooh, about two hours, seven minutes in there. Uh, we'll wind it down there, I think. Um, I'll be on tomorrow as usual doing our raids. Casual, not casual, it's not very casual. Farm run, I should say. Um, um, the, there will obviously be some... Well, this the last one, this then, Warcraft 3's World of Warcraft Chronicle Volume 3. They'll obviously change things. They've already decided in their own mind what they're going to change because they've already sort of changed it in their own mind. They'll just change it. This is one of the reasons why I don't go back and read the old World of Warcraft novels because loads of them, especially the early ones, have now been, they're now wrong. Um, so it's not a suitable source of law. You're actually far better off just reading WoW Wiki for the law now because someone is working hard to keep to keep it canon, um, whereas you read the books and you don't know whether it's valid or not. But anyway, yeah, so tomorrow we are 7 p.m. UK time. I'll be doing Tumor Sargeras uh, farming, which will be heroic, then the mythic farm bosses. Uh, whether we'll get them all done, I don't know. Hopefully we will. See you later. Um, and yeah, see you later to all of you as well. So for tomorrow or whenever. Uh, and then Saturday afternoon, I'll be streaming some more Argus PTR, I should think. Um, but all those sort of details, I all sort of say on Twitter as well, a bit of hand. And obviously, I can see some people have followed me on tonight. If you follow me, obviously, you get a bit of a notification. Everything on the internet is accurate, yes, exactly. Precisely. Um, see you later.